All right, now it's time for the water pump. Make sure you get that surface perfect for that gasket. Clean all the holes and chase them with the thread chaser. This is the 5 16 18 thread. Also, this hole here goes clear back into the water jacket, so you're gonna to wanna to use some of that uh, water jacket sealant on that bolt. I said Permatex earlier, I'm using Loctite. Permatex has a good one too. Here's the water pump. This is a high volume HESCO with a aluminum impeller. On the top edge, you'll see that threaded hole. That's for this water neck for the heater hose. So we gotta put that on before we stick it on the block. So this heater hose tube already has thread sealant on it. Just put it in, tighten it until it's getting pretty snug where it's just about there. And then what you wanna do is have it kind of flat so that you can set the pump on there with the gasket, tighten the pump down, and then hit it with a wrench and tighten it the last little bit until it's perfectly going down the side of the valve cover. Give the water pump gasket a very thin coating of this Permatex Ultra Black. I mean really thin. Just enough where you can see the color of the gasket through it. And then stick it on. I like to use a little bit of blue Loctite on three of the bolts. Thread it through the hole. Just barely get it started. All right, so these three with the Loctite on them, just snug them down. The fourth one that goes into the water jacket, you want to use some more of this goop. Get it all over the threads. Don't be bashful with this stuff. You don't want it leaking. I'm even going to shoot a little bit in that hole. And then run it down in there. If you're using a 98 and earlier block, these things take 22 foot-pounds of torque. If you're using a 99 and later, they take 17 foot-pounds of torque. Smash them down. Now with the water pump on there tight, we'll tighten that heater hose tube just until it's facing right back down the valve cover. Just about right. That sucker torqued down on there, and when I rotated the impeller, I could feel it was scraping on something. So I unbolted it, pulled it back off, and if you look at the edge of the impeller, you can see it's a little, a little chewed up. So, it wasn't scraping on the sleeve of the cylinder there, but it was, looked like it was coming from the edge of that head bolt that comes down into the water jacket. So I'm gonna put the little Dremel in there with the little flapper wheel on it and round that bolt off a little bit, vacuum it out as I do it. Good to go. All right, so high volume pump calls for a high volume thermostat and a high volume water neck. All right, so this is the same as the water pump. You wanna put a thin film of RTV on both sides of the gasket. Your thermostat, this is a high volume one. You might not use this style, but make sure that there's not a little uh, a hole to bleed air through. Some of them have them. And this looks like it has a little dimple right there. So I wanna put that facing up, just in case any air escapes through there to help it burp. So it'll go like that with the ribs facing out. Line up the slots on the water neck. Then you want to slip a bolt through and right into the hole with some Loctite on the tip of the thing. Get the bottom one on there, Loctite on that, and snug them up. And torque them down to 13 foot-pounds. And now I'm going to bolt on the oil filter adapter. Just going to disassemble this and put some new seals in it, clean it up. And then I've got an oil cooler to go on with it. All right, so pop this guy out of here. You got two seals on here, here and here. Got this seal here. And I'm going to remove this. That's a one inch. Just break it loose and spin that sucker out of there. 
but oil can get pretty varnished in there so you want to make sure to just scrub all the little bits and pieces out so your new seals fit perfectly. Here's the new o-ring set. Kind of slip it on there with some assembly lube. And I cut part of the packaging, slip it over the threads to protect the smaller o-ring from getting nicked on these. New o-ring in here. Some of that assembly lube. Looped up. That's that. Alright, so I got the threads all gooped up with some more of this Loctite. What you want to do is line up this roll pin into that indentation. Use the T60 Torx and tighten it down to 50 foot pounds. This is a Hesco oil cooler and warmer. So it'll keep your engine oil closer to your coolant temperature. Uh, coolant comes in here, circulates around, comes out here. Oil goes through here, out here, and into your filter and then back through. Pretty neat little device. Um, it'll help your oil get warmer faster in the morning as well. Trying to warm it up on those cold days. Comes with this little ring. You can see it's uh, tapered. That will fit over here and help center it. We're going to tap that into the filter adapter. I'm going to thread in some Loctite on here, this little tube, this little gasket it comes with has these little tabs that lock on, so then what we're going to do is slip this sucker on, put this nut on here, and tighten that sucker down to 35 foot-pounds. Make sure you get this centered up right where you want the coolant hoses coming out. All right, let's try it out. Got the filter. Seal's all lubed up. Good to go. Now it's time to play with that intake manifold, port match it to the head, and get the throttle body hole ready. These are our three studs that go into the head. I got these from Hesco. Put one on either end and one in the center. Tighten these down to 24 foot-pounds using a E8 socket. Be really careful tightening these. You don't want to strip out this aluminum cylinder head or if you've got a steel one you don't want to snap it off. All of these holes do have helicoil inserts in them but still be really careful. Using the Banks exhaust manifold, just going to pull it out of the box, grab the gasket, set it on here. That thing is sweet. Comes with a pack of destructions and some small parts, a little exhaust donut, some bolts and stuff in there. And this is what I'm looking for. Gasket. So this is the paper gasket that I had. It's got some metal impregnated in it. And kind of flimsy, but it doesn't seem too bad. And this is the one that came with that Banks exhaust manifold. This thing is really nice. It's got that kind of leaded soft feel to it. Rigid. Definitely pretty sweet. Alright, so here's what we're after. Trying to get the intake manifold holes to match the holes on the head. Oliver over at High Pro Engines in Denver did a great job opening these up when he did the valves and set that head up. So what we're going to do is put the gasket on. Looks like the openings are just right. So we're going to take that gasket, set it up against the intake manifold, trace it out, and then grind that away. Make a match. So I've got that gasket kind of clamped on there with a the bolt. I'm just going to trace it out. I'll follow that up with a Sharpie. manifold turned out nice. Uh, these match perfectly to the intake holes and that head is going to breathe really well. Now I just need to take care of this issue. Mrs. Claus bought me a 70 millimeter throttle body from 505 this year. This thing's sweet. It'll really make this thing breathe. So what we got to do is open up this hole. The gasket on, trace out the circle and remove the excess. 
got it traced out and that turned out pretty nice too. These motor mount brackets just showed up in the mail yesterday from Brown Dog. These things are pretty sweet. Let's get these mounted up. Comes with some really nice instructions, all color, attention to detail. This is pretty nice. Got the bracket on, bolts are just in finger tight. They all take red Loctite and a torque, but not ready to bolt them down yet. Got to put the power steering pump bracket on it. Goes in behind this bolt back here. But this thing's looking a little rough, so time to clean it up and give it a shot of paint. Get the passenger side while the paint's drying on the other bracket. If you have a coil pack, this is where it's going to mount. These are the 516 spokes, and they take 25 foot-pounds of torque. The 3 8 ones, you can see them, they go over the alternator bracket. These ones take 40 foot-pounds of torque, and they all take red Loctite. All right, got the power steering pump bracket all cleaned up, squirted blue. Clamped down in behind the motor mount bracket, 40 foot-pounds of torque, red Loctite. Got my block heater cord installed, routed up underneath this stud through this cushion clamp. It'll keep it from getting nicked on anything sharp. Out of the way of the exhaust, nice and neat. Down here in the bottom corner, there's a metric bolt. And the same thing, all of these. 40 foot-pounds of torque, red Loctite. All these extra mounting points, this is solid construction. I am absolutely not worried about this thing tearing off the block with that extra power or romping around four-wheeling or whatever. Made in America, brown dog. Get some. These things are nice. Now let's mount this exhaust header, manifold, whatever you want to call it. Get this gasket on here, around the studs. Slip it on using the end studs and the middle stud. And we've got just enough clearance here with that brown dog engine bracket. That's perfect. I got these conical washers for the exhaust and intake from Timbuk3 in Sheridan, Colorado. It's a great source for used Jeep parts. I clean these up with a wire wheel. They look pretty nice. They'll, they'll do just fine on there. Uh, Hesco is also another good source for these things. They're like three or four bucks a piece new on there, but it's one of the few places to find them. Uh, you want to put these on with the um, cone facing out and the cup facing in. Then I got some 3 8 24 thread pitch locking nuts from Ace Hardware, and we're going to put those on as well. Then just snug them up. And for the intake manifold, we're going to use those same conical washers, but I'm also going to use these Stage 8, part number 6918, locking bolts. These things will not loosen up. Made in the USA, these things are awesome. And since there's such a good locking mechanism on these bolts, I'm going to use this copper anti-seize just to protect the head. So I've got one ready, a little bit of anti-seize on the bolt. Got the washer facing the right way on there. Set it on top of the valve cover. Grab that intake manifold, and there are these... Little holes you need to line up with the pins. Makes it easy to set it on there. Get that sucker on there. Put that first bolt in. Kind of holds against the header or manifold, whatever you want to call it. And the intake at the same time. All right, got the first bolt kind of snugged on there. It takes a 12.38 socket. All right, so they're all snugged up, just barely snugged. And if you're having a hard time getting these ones up underneath there and you need to get them at kind of an angle, instead of using that 3 8 12 point, use a 10 millimeter 12 point. It gives you a little bit more of an angle without using a swivel. All right, now that they're all snug, you want to tighten the studs with a nut down to 23 foot pounds and the bolts down to 24 foot pounds. Good luck with that. With the angle, you have to go out with an extension or a swivel. You're going to lose some of your torque value on that. So get them all pretty close to 24. Call it good. Don't over tighten them. It's a lot easier to replace the gasket than it is uh, stripping out a head. Okay, so the next step with these stage eight bolts are these little locking tabs. So you want to slip them on in a manner so that if the bolt were to try to loosen up, it would stop against something stationary, like in this case, the uh, exhaust manifold or header. And then you want to slip an E-clip on to lock it in. Now, if it tries to loosen up, it can't. The same instructions, if you need to modify it by grinding away a little bit of this to make it fit a little tighter, you can. I'm calling it good. Another thing that I noticed is when you put it on, if it looks like it should be a little tighter but it won't quite fit, you can pull it off, flip it over, and it'll clock a lot closer. 